Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God is faithful. He was faithful to his promise to Abraham, delivering his descendants from Egypt from the land of slavery, promising that from them would come the Messiah. At Sinai, the people of Israel themselves heard the voice of God speaking from the mountain, saying to them, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no sacred sculptured artifacts or representation of what's in the heavens or on earth or in the seas. And you will not bow down before them, and you will not serve them, because I, the Lord, your God, I am a jealous God. Four chapters later in the book of Exodus, Moses writes all the words of the Lord, and he reads them in the presence of the people. And they say, we will do all that the Lord has said. We will obey them. And God invited Moses to climb up Mount Sinai. And even before he received the stone tablets, even before he came back down, the people, in their unfaithfulness, had demanded that Aaron create for them an idol. That he would melt down their golden jewelry, their earrings, and form for them a golden calf. And so this is what God's judgment was against them. They quickly left my will that I gave them. They made themselves a calf made out of metal. And they have bowed down before it. They've sacrificed to it, saying, Israel, here are the gods that have brought you out of Egypt. All all that God had told them not to do That is exactly what they did. They made an idol. They called it by God's name. And they gave all the glory of their salvation to their own creation. Here God's judgment against them. My anger comes up against them. And I will make them disappear from the face of the earth. While I will make of you, Moses, a great nation. God doesn't need the entire nation of Israel to bring forth his Messiah. He can bring it from the line of Moses. And so God, who is a jealous God, he who is faithful to his people, expects his people to be faithful back to him. Why? Because faithfulness is an indication of love. And God, who is love, has loved them and been faithful to them. And the fact that the people of God have been unfaithful to him, it's an indication that they do not love him, that they are rejecting him, that they are putting their own wishes and desires above the desires of their God who has loved them. And it is truly an absence of love that they aren't loving their God in word or in deed. We expect a husband and wife to be faithful to each other. Why? Because it's a demonstration of their love for each other. It's easy to say, I love you. It's a lot more work to live it out in your actions than what you give to the other person of your, of your blessings, of your time, of your energy, of your service to them. But true love is both in act and in word, in word and in deed. And the Israelites, they neither loved God in their words or in their deeds as they worshiped this false God. God wanted them to love him with all of their heart and with all of their soul and with all of their strength because that's how he loved them that he would send his own son to them. That his love for the entire world would come through this people who did nothing to earn his love, 
but who benefited from that love. And that is the reason that it was so detestable that these people would bow down and worship a graven image. Because you cannot capture a living God in the image of what is dead. So God would not let them create an image for them. And so we see the role of a mediator in our text today. That God allowed Moses to be the mediator. To call on him, to remind him of his own promises. Calling on God to be faithful. And it is that way. God is faithful. Because the God of the Old Testament sent his son, Jesus Christ, the only true God, the image of the invisible God in human flesh for our salvation. Jesus would say before he died, he who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you know the true and living God? It is through his son, Jesus Christ, who has died for you. There you see God, the invisible God, at work for your salvation. And that was the problem of the ancient Israelites. They wanted to see God. And they weren't content with his word. We also need a mediator because we have the same problem. Times where we want to see God or we don't have the proof or because we don't see him, we have doubts. But Jesus, for this very reason, is our mediator. This is good and pleasing to God, our Savior, that he desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is only one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself up as a ransom for all. This is the mediator that we need. He who is not just a mediator, but who was the sacrifice for us to cover our sins. That his blood pleads on our behalf. And while the people of Israel were unfaithful, we need a mediator because we also are unfaithful. I, like the Israelites, often promise to be faithful to God, but I don't live it out in my actions. Sometimes my words even fall short as I'm gossiping or I'll tell a lie or I fail to call on him in my need. I know I make myself my own God by thinking that I can handle everything myself and that I don't need his intercession and his intervention in my life. Or else... I fear, and I fail to call on him in my need. We are so easy and quick to call on our idols, our false gods. A few weeks ago, I was visiting a church in the region. It's just a small little church, but I went up and I saw the altar. And what did I see? Did I see our mediator, Jesus Christ, who's ready to plead to God on our behalf? Sadly, no. I saw an altar built to Mary, the mother of Jesus. What that church did is similar to what the Israelites in the Old Testament did. Creating an image of the invisible God. Taking something that is not God as our mediator. When we have access to God himself as our mediator. I doubt that you're calling on Mary as the one to intercede to God the Father on your behalf, because you have Jesus Christ, your Savior, to do that for you. But even then, you have doubts and times where you wander, and you, you, like the people of Israel, don't believe because you don't see him before you. This week we celebrate the ascension, and we know that Jesus is ascended and sits at the right hand of the Father, but because we don't see him, we have doubts. So I ask, what do you make your idols in the place of God? There's nothing greater that can show you your idols than a child and what a child can do to your idols. You look at a brand new book 
and the child decides to draw in it, look at your reaction. And you go, that's become my idol. You have your guitar and it suddenly has a hole in it. Or they take a pair of scissors to your brand new couch. Or you let them use your tablet and they drop it and the screen breaks. And you find out that these things have become your God. You don't realize what you let become your God until you lose it. And how you put your own desires before those of God and before the needs of your neighbor. If we, as Christians, are unfaithful to our God, what else can we say about this world? We find in this world people who treat God like a preference. They look for a God who can satisfy their momentary desires. They look for a God and make it a personal preference. Oh, if I don't like this God, I can choose that God. Not letting God be who he is. And in the unfaithfulness of this world, we find people who are more faithful to their brand of portable cellular phone than to the Lord. That people are more faithful to Apple or Samsung than to the God who created them. Our only hope is that God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That he himself has sent his own son as the mediator between us and him. Our hope is that while we are unfaithful, he is faithful and he cannot deny himself. That he's put his name on you in the waters of baptism, marking you as his own child. And because you belong to him, he will not deny you. You have a mediator in Jesus who is faithful, more faithful than Moses ever was, faithful in giving his own blood on the altar of the cross. You have have a mediator who offered himself for you and for your sins, who has died that you might have life. Jesus was faithful unto death. He was faithful in his obedience to the law, faithful to the Father, faithful to you, faithful in his word so that you can trust his promises, faithful in his deeds, faithful to his bride, the church, faithful when he calls you on behalf of the Father to return to him, to come back to him, faithful because he forgives you of all of your sins which is the Father's will for you. And finally, in his faithfulness, he calls to you and gives you this promise. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. In the name of Jesus, our risen Savior, who has died and is risen, so that he would give you eternal life. He who is faithful will do it. In Jesus' name. Amen.